So a very good morning to you all. Uh, very good morning to all the participants and a warm welcome to day four of our AAPD sponsor short term course on design of landfills and waste containment systems. So I thank you so much for all the participants to overwhelmingly participating in this short term course and making it a success. Uh, so there are uh, four number of lectures are scheduled today in the morning session. Uh, so as you can see in this slide, the first lecture will be delivered by Professor Dona Vista uh, Katerina from SS Cyril and Methodius University on landfill or waste containment facility site selection. So thereafter, uh, Professor S.K. Das from IIT IASM Dunbar. So he'll be going to deliver an expert lecture on stability analysis of waste containment facility. And thereafter, Professor Ankit Gar from Sandow University, China. So he's going to deliver on exploring functional biochars as amendment in cover materials of clean infrastructure, erosion studies, and soil biochars. So at the end, uh, Professor Ramya from IIT Bhuneshwar. So she's going to talk about leachate collection and uh, treatment systems. So all the four lectures are very, very interesting and uh, highly useful. So for the design of landfills and waste containment systems. So first, let us uh, give warm welcome to Professor Dona Vista Katerina from SS Cyril and Methodius University. So I feel it's my honor uh, to introduce about Professor uh, Katerina. So Professor uh, Katerina is a professor of civil engineering at the University of SS Cyril and the Methodius University. So she has over 35 years of working experience uh, in North Macedonia and was Fulbright visiting scholar at the Bowling Green State University, Ohio, during the academic year 2010 and 11. So Professor Dona Vista also been uh, given visiting professor at the University of Piringi School of Engineering, Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, and at the University of uh, Azumbljana, Faculty for Biotechnology, uh, Slovenia. She has academic background in irrigation and hydrology and has been trained on environmental impact assessment. So including training program organized by the CIDA, Sweden. Professor uh, Donaviska's research is mainly in the domain of environmental impacts of landfills, landfill site selection and design, irrigation, and climate change impact on water resources. So she offers a combination of academic education and a professional background in all aspects of landfills, environmental impact assessment, planning and design of irrigation and drainage systems and hydrology. So she has served as a reviewer for many reputed journals and conferences. So besides research and lecturing, she has been a part of team responsible for design and review of landfills and many hydraulic civil engineering structures. So fortunately, I had an opportunity to listen to a lot of lectures of Professor uh, Katharina on especially site selection for landfills and waste containment facilities. So th thank you so much, Professor. So she is one of the experts uh, in the world. So who has a profound knowledge on site selection of landfills and waste containment facilities. So let us try to uh, hear from her and try to learn and try to implement. So in our uh, local conditions. So I now leave the floor to Professor Katharina. Professor, you, Dr. Rao. yeah. Could you please start sharing your screen? Yes, uh, yes, I'm just, yes. Is it okay right now? Yes, perfect. Yes, do we see? Perfect, okay. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Good morning to all participants on the course on design of landfill waste containment systems. At the beginning, I would like to thank Dr. Rao for inviting me to contribute to the, this course and share a little bit of my knowledge about landfill waste containment facilities. Uh, firstly, because um, this is my first presentation for the for this university and this course, I would like to briefly introduce my country and university. It will be very brief. I come from the Republic of North Macedonia. It's in the Balkans and the, the country is uh, 25,000 square kilometers uh, uh, inhabited by 2 million inhabitants. 
The capital is Skopje. Here are some pictures of the capital of some other nice cities. Also some pictures of some ancient monuments, uh, rivers, natural surface waters like lakes, then artificial reservoirs and many dams in the country, ski centers and artificial and agricultural land. The university is founded, I come from the St. Cyril and Metidus University in Skopje that was founded in 1949. It is a state university, a combination of many faculties uh, of many scientific fields. And I come from the Faculty of Civil Engineering. It is also 72 years old faculty, state-owned uh, faculty. And there are many programs in our faculty. These are in civil engineering, in geodesy and geotechnical engineering. I'm a civil engineer. My background is in civil engineering, in hydrology, and also in irrigation drainage and landfills. Let's start with the presentation, today's presentation. The presentation is consisted of three separate parts. The first one is the background. The second one is the review of landfill site selection methodologies and criteria based on a recently published paper about comprehensive review of the landfill site selection methodologies and criteria. It is published in the Journal of Indian Institute of Science. And the third part of today's presentation is a case study about regional non-hazardous landfill site selection. It is a case study. Uh, by integrating of fuzzy logic, analytical hierarchy process, and GIS for the uh, particular region in my country, North Macedonia. It is, this research, it is also based on research that is based about 10 years ago, uh, while I was a full writer at Ohio State University, in Bowling Green State University, I'm sorry. Let's start with the background, a little bit history how of a little bit of history about waste management practices. We are all aware that at the beginning, waste was dumped at not at the landfills, but at the wild dumps. And this waste management practices while dumping was associated with many environmental problems. It started with odor, uh, fire, then the other environmental problems was contamination of surface waters and also the leaching. Uh, penetrated into the grounds and contaminated the groundwaters. Also other environmental problems were the landfill gases like CO2 and methane. And due to the, these environmental problems, uh, then uh, some um, adaptation, some measures were performed to protect the environment for the first time in the 1970s. The sanitary landfills have been constructed, and the sanitary landfills uh, included compaction of the waste, then daily and uh, final cover material. Then monitoring of groundwater and surface water was performed. Uh, the access of the sites was controlled and also permit, uh, it was permitted, the, all the landfills were permitted. But although there was some modernization of the techniques of the, uh, waste, uh, of, the, of the waste management practices, these were not enough measures to, to protect the environment completely. That's why uh, in 1980s, modern landfills were already started to be constructed, which included uh, construction of bottom liners, then construction of rigid collection system, then final cover systems, as well as landfill gas controls. At the end, the most of uh, the present, till the present times, the modern landfills include improvement containment systems, bioreactors, and include energy recovery of the gas. Uh, well, uh, what is waste containment unit? It is a waste containment containment unit is an area of land that is used for purpose of containing solid waste uh, while minimizing the emissions of the waste constituents out of the out of the unit to the environment. There are two types of waste containment units. The first ones are the landfills and the other ones are surface impoundments. Landfills. We will try to, to understand what are the landfills. What do they mean? 
According, I will present a one definition of the European Union Council there, uh, according to the Council Directive of the European Union. And it is the landfill means a waste disposal site for uh, like internal waste disposal site, like in some industry, we are landfill, we are producer of the waste is carrying its own waste disposal at the place of production. And it can be a permanent site, uh, which is used for, let's say, exploitation period for a longer period for 25 years or 30 years. And this uh, permanent site is used for temporary storage of the waste. Landfills can be uh, are classified as sites designed, constructed for storage, treatment, and disposal of solid waste, and they are generally operated as disposal methods. According to the uh, European Directive, Council Directive on the Landfill of Waste, there are three types of landfills, depending on the type of the waste that has been disposed. There are They can be hazardous, non-hazardous, and inert, laid, uh, inert landfills. Well, we come to also to the definition of the US Environmental Protection Agency that landfills are well engineered and managed facilities for disposal of solid waste. So there are, we can make a clear distinction between the landfill and the dumps. So all we see this environmental associate problems with dumping of uh, solid waste are not associated with landfills. So we will continue to speak about Landfill site selection. So we are speaking about facilities that are uh, in civil engineering facilities, how to site these civil engineering uh, sites for, for disposal of solid waste. The landfill site selection methodologies is regulated by mainly in the European Union by the directive uh, of 1999. And it is an annex one there, where there are general requirements for all classes of landfills. Also in the US, the 40 code of federal regulation 258 criteria for municipal solid waste landfill, they, uh, they, and they uh, mainly regulate the planning of the landfills or, or location restriction. They regulate the design, the operation, and also post closure or monitoring of the landfills. The landfill site selection process starts with defining of the set of the goals for landfill site selections. There are mainly in the literature that there are uh, five, uh, four set of goals that are being defined. The first one is minimizing the public health risk. This goal is achieved uh, uh, enabling some distance from the landfill boundary to the public water supplies, then enabling the distance from the bottom of the landfill to the groundwater table and distance to the residential areas. The second set of goals is minimizing the negative environmental impacts. This goal can be achieved by protecting the biodiversity, by protecting the hydrographic network like surface water bodies, rivers and lakes, and also protecting the hydrogeology like enabling um, enough depth to groundwater table, then specific some specific guidelines for permeability and thickness of the landfill base. Uh, well, the third set of goal is maximizing the level of service to the facility users. It's very interesting to know that this achieving the level of maximizing the level of service to the facility user can be this uh, this goal can be achieved when the landfill site is closer to the producers, closer to the settlements. But if we go back to the first goal, minimizing the public health risk, if we want to achieve this goal, we have to set the landfill site as far as possible from the uh, waste generation centers like urban and rural areas. And the last, the fourth set of goals is minimizing the landfill costs. costs. Uh, so minimizing the landfill cost is also one of uh, one set of goals that is uh, opposing the, the, the first and the second set of goals. The process of landfill sites uh, selections consisted of generally four phases. The first, uh, the first phase uh, in, uh, includes identification of all the areas that should be excluded from further consideration. And excluding these areas can be 
based on some legal restrictions. For example, uh, there are some legal restrictions regarding to the distance to, to airports. For example, some countries regulate that the distance to the airports should be set to 3000 meters or maybe distance to falls or maybe distance to, to some uh, settlements. Uh, these are legal restrictions. However, there are some physical constraints like, uh, for example, areas with surface waters, lands with urban, urban and rural settlements, they, they cannot serve uh, as uh, landfill areas. Uh, so uh, after all these area have been, areas have been excluded, all the remaining areas can be considered as preliminary uh, as uh, potentially suitable. However, these remaining areas should be ranked uh, uh, should be ranked accordingly some according to some other criteria. And uh, there is some specific methodology that are being used to rank the, the remaining areas. This, uh, uh, these methodologies that are being used are mainly GIS, multi-criteria decision analysis, analytical hierarchy processes, analytical networking processes, also compromise programming. And they, and they also include many non-exclusionary criteria. Uh, when this phase uh, is implemented, then the, the remaining, the third phase is uh, uh, a remaining short list of sites or areas. And for the, this uh, short list of sites or uh, areas, then a detailed investigation is performed, like uh, investigation of the of the bedrock type, hydrogeology, land use, and then a preliminary engineering design is performed for these areas. Environmental impact assessment is being performed, and also landfill costs. And according to the environmental impact assessment and land land called landfill cost comparison, uh, the most preferred site is being selected. When the most preferred site is being selected, it's uh, it ends with planning and design procedures with final design procedures. Uh, then environmental impact assessment license and application of the project. Well, the most important question is when uh, in the preliminary assessment, which method to apply? Is it going to be GIS and multi-criteria decision and analysis? Is it going to be weighted linear combination? Or is it going to an analytical hierarchy and analytical networking processes, maybe ordered weighted average or fuzzy analytical hierarchy processes? So to answer this question, then uh, a research has been performed of the most relevant scientific papers. Uh, to, to research all these relevant scientific papers, they were uh, reviewed scientific journal papers into the uh, uh, American Society of Civil Engineering Library, Elsevier Library, Springer's li Library, Saga Journals, and Taylor and Francis. After all, of, after all these electronic databases of all these peer-reviewed scientific journal publishers have been searched, then uh, Google Scholar browser was also searched. Uh, the, the search was performed in August 2020, from August to September 2020. There was no filtering of the year of the publication, and the general terms that were used were, were landfill site selection, landfill siting, and landfill allocation. And these keywords were searched in the title abstract and keywords of the papers. Then afterwards, all the selected papers were selected to be only in English language, which resulted in a list of 89 scientific papers. The results of the research showed that all these 89 scientific papers, they based their research on a case study and according to the uh, according to the country where the case study is being performed, there are, uh, uh, there are 30 case study countries. And Iran, Turkey, India, Greece, and USA are the top five countries. They represent nearly 57% of the total articles. Regarding the temporal distribution, it, can, it, has, been, uh, it has been noticed that the most frequent use of uh, landfill site selection methods has been noticed starting from, let's say, 2006 
till today. And uh, it is also very interesting to, to, to know that GIS techniques are um, uh, in combination with other decision-making techniques are used by 86 percentage of the researchers, which means that GIS is uh, very widely used for, uh, for uh, landfill site selection as a method. This is due to the spatial uh, nature of the landfill site selection problems, which, is, uh, which can be easily uh, solved with GIS as, uh, as a tool. Uh, regarding the geographical data model, GIS raster is prevailing over GIS vector analysis, and mainly um, uh, also synergy of GIS with uh, multi-criteria decision analysis have been uh, widely used. The most frequently used method is weighted linear combination or simple additive weighting that is being used most frequently used by uh, during the researches, nearly by 33 percentage of the researches, and this weighted linear combination is very uh, is very uh, favorable for when we want to uh, to prioritize some criteria among the others. And then that is achieved by assigning weights to each criteria, and uh, the weighted simple weighted linear combination uses the the weights such and uh, where the final score is a sum of the weights of the criteria constrained to sum and uh, which criteria is associated to the standardized scores and uh, to, to each criteria. Uh, well, the, all these criteria can be, uh, can be estimated uh, and can be according to equal weighting, they can be ratio scale weighting, and they can be estimated by analytical hierarchy processes. Equal weighting is when all the criteria have, have, the, have the same, uh, let's say, significance into the uh, landfill size selection process. Uh, and uh, ratio scale weighting uh, is also when there are uh, 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 predetermined the, the, the weights and analytical hierarchy process uh, is mainly used by the researchers for criteria weighting. It's been used by 43 percentage of the researchers and it has been less frequently used for ranking the alternatives. Analytical hierarchy process uh, is uh, very, uh, very frequently used and it enables weight estimation of quantitative and qualitative criteria. It's using pairwise matrices to build utilities functions. For example, you know, using analytical hierarchy processes, uh, all the criteria are compared and they are compared to just to, to uh, to establish which criteria is in more important and how much more important. For example, if we compare, for example, distance from springs to the other criteria from this pairwise comparison matrix, and then we compare distance from springs with all other uh, criteria, we compare how much distance from springs is much more important than distance from lakes, distance from rivers, elevation, and slope. And that's how we put here in the, in the pairwise matrix all these numbers. As a result of the calculation, the weights are being established here. The weights and these weights are associated with each of these criteria. At the end, consistency ratio is being uh, estimated. And this consistency uh, and this uh, ratio is very important because uh, it, it enables the consistency of the, of the estimations of the, of the of whole uh, analytics uh, processes. Well, Another methods that are being used are remote sensing. Remote sensing is being used, it's very frequently used in uh, nowadays because uh, it is combined with GIS methods. Well, uh, remote sensing is also uh, uh, used uh, for uh, preparing a geospatial database. database. Uh, well, GIS and, uh, and RS are uh, used to prepare the geospatial database. For example, the RS is being used for making uh, satellite images, for example, of the vegetation 
or maybe it can be used for make a satellite image of the land use. And uh, these images are being used in landfill site selection process, while multi-criteria decision analysis is being used to rank the alternatives. Well, also there are some combined uh, uses of GIS analytical hierarchy processes with drastic method, where drastic method is used for assessment of groundwater vulnerability to contamination. Well, uh, analytical hierarchy process and GIS tools are selected in selecting, for example, reliable landfill locations. When it comes to the criteria, uh, it's very important uh, to know that uh, for landfill site selection, there are mainly two, two types of criteria. The first group of criteria are constraints or criteria that are exclusionary criteria. And there is the other group are non-exclusionary criteria. Constraints or exclusionary criteria include the first group of legal criteria where these legal criteria are, are, are written into the, uh, into the regulations, countries' regulations, and they can, for example, uh, they, can, um, they can set, they can regulate, for example, the distance to the airports. They can regulate how much should be the distance from the landfill boundary of the landfill to the airport, from the boundary of the landfill to the fold, or from the boundary of the, for example, on this picture, it is what will be the bound, what will be the distance from the boundary of the landfill to the surface water bodies like this lake, or distance from the boundary of the landfill to the residential and recreational areas, and the sanitary protection zones. There are some around some public water supply. Then it is also very important criteria, the distance or the depth from the bottom of the landfill to the groundwater table. This can be all set into the, into the regulation. The other type of the uh, criteria of these constraints can be physical constraints. And these physical constraints are maybe areas with surface waters that can, that cannot serve like uh, landfill site, and also constrained land with urban and rural settlements, also transportation infrastructure, national parks, or et cetera. In the group of non-exclusionary criteria, all these criteria can be grouped according to, the, to their hierarchy. For example, one group of criteria, they, they simply uh, uh, they, they, uh, they are in two, two they form a two level hierarchy. And the first level is um, fulfilling some, some aim, for example, fulfilling an environmental aim, protection of environment. And the second aim is economic aim, fulfilling some economical considerations. And then this environmental and economic consideration, they, they are consisted of of, uh, of criteria fulfilling this aim for protection of the environment or fulfilling some economic aim, like for example, uh, minimizing the costs for let's say transportation. Then uh, all, this, uh, all these aims, environmental considerations consisted of, of uh, criteria like slope, elevation, distance from rivers, distance from lakes, distance from springs, et cetera. And economic consideration is consisted of some other criteria like proximity to roads, to building materials, on to dense populations. One level hierarchy criteria are the sole criteria grouped into one level uh, table, let's say, or hierarchy. When it comes to the criteria, all the analy analysis uh, from, the, from the research showed that the most popular main criteria, if we have two level hierarchy, are the environmental group of criteria, the economic, social, hydrogeology, and topographical or morphological. While the most used sub criteria are distance to surface waters, which means that most of the researchers uh, set the distance to surface water, distance to urban area or rural area, distance to roads, slope or morphology as the most important sub criteria. Most of the researchers use these 
types of criteria. But when it comes to the criteria, it's very important to know that all these criteria might not be easily measurable. They can be measured in different scales and that can lead to, uh, to some imprecision and uncertainty. Sometimes also an expert knowledge is being used and it's also contributing to a certain degree of imprecision and uncertainty. That's why a need for criteria standardization uh, there is a need for criteria standardization, and that's why fuzzy set has been used, fuzzy set theory, and fuzzy set theory is specified by membership function. When it comes to the fuzzy set theory and membership function, uh, membership function is representing any object on a continuous scale from one that represents full membership to zero represented non-full membership, which means that fuzzy maps for each criteria has membership values when we, when we create fuzzy membership maps, they have values between zero, which means that they are not suitable for landfill siting, and one, which means that these areas are suitable for landfill siting. There are many types of fuzzy functions, this picture presents a linear, G-shaped or sigmoidal, or also there are many other types of fuzzy functions. All these fuzzy functions and uh, membership functions are being used for, uh, for criteria map standardization. Now we go to the uh, last part of the presentation. It is the case study for regional non uh, hazardous landfill site selection. And uh, this study has been performed in the region in Macedonia. It is a region in the northwestern part. It is called Polog region. This region is uh, surrounded by high mountains. It is a valley surrounded by high mountains on the west, also on the south and also on the east. There is a need for a landfill because the current waste management practices include uh, dumping of the solid waste on the wild dumps. And uh, some data about waste quantities are presented here that uh, generated solid waste is nearly 1.4 kilo per day per citizen. Waste is not selected, it's dumped on wild dumps. The catchment area is consisted of the valley on the northwestern part of the country is located between the mountain on the northwest, there is a mountain on the southeast, there is a river that springs here in the, near this city here on the south, and the, the river shapes the valley, goes through the valley and shapes the valley. The total number of population is nearly 300,000 according to the 2002 census. There are nearly 140 settlements and the estimated landfill capacity for this number of population is nearly 4.4 million cubic meters of capacity. It's including daily and final cover material. Here are some pictures that are going to make maybe present a little bit more of the, of the terrain of the catchment area. And regarding the catchment area and uh, geology on the, the high mountains on the west are the magmatic, marls and magmatic uh, uh, metamorphic complexes. Then the valley is consisted of sedimentary highly permeable rock masses. On the eastern part, there are carbonate complexes. And also here, in this part, there are carbonated complexes, but with often occurrences of karsts. There is an active vault going through the country and also passing through this area. Regarding the hydrogeology, the, on the, the lowland, the valley, is very highly producing aquifer, very high coefficient of permeability. And also, it's very important to know that this area on the east, these mountains, also they have highly productive aquifers and also 
also highly productive aquifer in this area where there is a spring uh, in this area. This spring is of very high capacity. It varies between 3.3 cubic meters per second and 7.5 cubic meter per second. And it supplies uh, with drinking water, the capital of the country. Water is of good quality, it supplies uh, the city with drinking water by gravitation. That's why it is of high, very high importance and is under protection with national regulation and zones of protection are um, established for this spring. The zones of protection, there are three zones of protection. The first one of the zone is near the spring. The second one is, is in the eastern part of the mountain. And the third protection zone of this spring is the lowland of the whole valley. So uh, in the first and the second zone, landfill is not permitted according to the uh, regulation, while the third zone, it can be uh, permitted according to the local conditions. It's very important. So the hydrogeology as a criteria is very important because we want to protect this source of uh, water for uh, drinking water supply. The criteria have been defined, taking into consideration the regulation of the European Union and also national regulations where, which are fully implemented. Well, the method that has been implemented is consisted of uh, the following steps. First includes criteria selection. All the criteria are being grouped into two groups, into environmental and economic group of criteria. Then all the criteria have been standardized using selection of fuzzy membership functions and control points. Then criteria maps have been created. Afterwards, uh, the ways have been assigned using analytical hierarchy processes. And also these ways have been assigned to the environmental group of criteria. But economic criteria has been uh, considered that, he, that they have equal weighting. So there were no weights assigned to the economical group of criteria. Afterwards, weighted linear combination was used to aggregate criteria maps and then intermediate suitability maps have been created. After uh, the fifth phase includes definition of scenarios for final aggregation of intermediate suitability maps and final suitability maps have been created. The, the criteria, as we have stated, there are two groups of criteria, environmental and economical group of criteria. And these are in the the, the criteria are um, non-exclusionary criteria. But before this non-exclusionary criteria have been defined, all the constraints or exclusionary criteria were implemented like national parks, protected zones, urban and rural areas and lakes. We, all, these, uh, all these constraints, have all these areas have been excluded as potential landfill site lo locations. The group of uh, non-exclusionary criteria in the group of environmental criteria, the main criteria, the sub-criteria that were cons considered were the slope, elevation, distance from rivers, distance from lakes, distance from springs, land use, hydrogeology, distance from faults, and distance from urban and rural areas. In the group of economical criteria, proximity to roads, proximity to building material, and proximity to dense population were considered as, uh, let's say, uh, important criteria. After that, uh, all these criteria have been standardized using fuzzy membership functions, control points have been defined, and also the type of the fuzzy membership function. Uh, when these criteria have been, uh, the, uh, when these fuzzy membership functions have been used, then the maps have been created, and all these maps have been created both for the environmental group of criteria and for the economical group of criteria. Weights have been established using analytical hierarchy process. And a pairwise composition matrix has been created, and weights were established for each of the environmental group of criteria. Using this 
weights for the environmental criteria, an intermediate and weighted linear combination, then intermediate map for the environmental group of criteria has been created, also using equal weights and economic criteria, an intermediate wave or economic group of criteria have been, uh, has been created. Uh, when having these inter two intermediate maps, then, uh, then two, three scenarios were created to create, for creating the final map. This uh, scenario used uh, assigned different weights to the uh, economic and to the environmental intermediate map. The first scenario includes giving higher weight, 0 0.775, to the environmental group of criteria and 0 0.25 to the economic set of criteria. The second scenario assigns equal ways to the both environmental and economic set of criteria. And the third scenario includes uh, assi uh, uh, assigns a higher value to the, uh, to the economic set of criteria. Uh, for these three scenarios, the final maps were created and the results are presented here on this picture. The red areas presenting the values of the fuzzy numbers near to one, which means that these areas are more favorable for landfill siting. In the first scenario, it can be really clearly seen that the uh, red areas are, uh, let's say, located on a higher elevations, which means that uh, they, are on, um, uh, they are protecting the low land that is, let's say, vulnerable. Uh, the groundwater has is been vulnerable because it is a third. Uh, it's highly permeable aquifer. The second, for the second uh, set of, uh, for the second scenario, when the equal weights are assigned to the both uh, both uh, both intermediate maps, both both uh, environmental and economical set of criteria, it can be clearly distinguished that the red areas are located more lowlands. And for the third scenario, when the higher values are assigned to the economic set of criteria, the red areas are lowlands, uh, meaning that they are a lowlands because the settlements are in the lowlands. All the settlements and all the cities and uh, rural settlements are in the lowlands. It means that uh, if we want to achieve, um, if we, if we uh, assign higher value to the economical set of criteria, then, uh, then the most favorable uh, the most favorable areas for landfill siting will be closer to the to the settlements, but in, this is not fulfilling, let's say, the uh, environmental objective to to protect the lowland, which is uh, highly uh, permeable land. So this uh, we come to the to the conclusion that the aim of the research uh, was to indicate maybe the importance of uh, weight selection for the environmental and economic group of criteria. It is not to, this is not a research performed to get the final resolution of a landfill, potential landfill site, but just to, to show the methodology, the implementation of the methodology of the GIS, of the analytical hierarchy process of the FASI, and also the, to indicate the influence that has been the weight selection with the, and to indicate uh, that the responsibility of the, of the researcher and also of the decision maker when making uh, weight selection in the landfill site selection process. That is the, the second aim of the research is to illustrate the flexibility and also to demonstrate the method as a tool for multi-criteria decision analysis. So thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, I would rather. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Katerina. So please have a sip of water. <laughs>
yeah thank you so much for giving a lot thank of you. Ins- yeah lot of insights into understanding the site selection for landfills and waste yes. containment facilities so you have given a lot of uh, information and ideas So. There are many information, and it uh, it was a little bit. Uh, I I think I have uh, condensed the the all the information, especially for the second part for the uh, uh, case study. So, if there are any questions, to to let's say uh, remain some time for for questions. So, if there are may, any questions. Uh, I would rather answer. Sure, sure. So I now request uh, all the participants, please unmute yourself, and you can ask uh, Professor Kekarina. So please unmute and uh, pose a question. Yeah. SVS, uh, can you please unmute yourself and ask a question? You can also show your video. Uh, uh, Professor Katerina, there are a uh, couple of questions. Uh, the yes. first question, the first question is, uh, Madam. Criteria for assessing the age of the land. What would be the criteria for assessing the age of the land? The age of the landfill. Yeah. Hmm. Mm, meaning. Uh, maybe he mean to ask. Uh, he mean to correlate the site selection parameters with the age of the land. Age of the landfill. Okay. Uh, well, actually, uh, I did. I, I didn't uh, consider the age of the landfill because uh, when selecting uh, a new landfill, a new we are doing the landfill site selection process for selection of the potential landfill site for a new landfill, and we do the when we do this process. Uh, we, for example, estimate the, the landfill capacity for exploitation period, let's say, of 25 to 30 years. And we have uh, set it uh, as, um, uh, as a period that is going to be the exploitation period of the landfill. And it is the same for all the potential landfill areas. So uh, I don't think that we can use the age of the landfill uh, for selecting of a new landfill site as a criteria. If we want to make, uh, for example, uh, assessment of some environmental uh, impacts on the existing dumps, not on landfills, on the environment, maybe the age of the landfill can we can include as a criteria it is my it is my uh let's say um, opinion in the moment and according uh, regarding the age of the landfill and i see another question is this yeah answer uh, answering the question uh, enough or should we maybe explain a little bit more? I hope uh, it will be all right <laughs> because- Yes. Yeah, yes. And we'll any it. criteria we have? Uh, somebody asking about um, any criteria for choosing of different weightage. Mm-hmm. Uh, which uh, do we do we uh, re, do 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 you think that uh, different weightage in what aspect do you mean the different weightage economical in economical environmental all the you have put some weightage no point five point three like that so how you yes. select how, what how is the guideline 
uh, the guideline. There is no guideline. It, there, we just uh, we just assume the different uh, different weights. You know, you can do you can do whatever you, you set as an expert opinion. You think, for example, um, if you if you think that in this particular case that we had about this region in Macedonia, due to the significance of the spring, we set uh, three scenarios and three. Uh, three different sets for for criteria for environmental and economical set, but it is our uh, our assessment. You can do uh, your own assessment, and that that is the main uh, intent of the of the of the research, just to show the flexibility of the method that you can do any different weightage, but to be very much aware of the of the selection of the weights. That different that selection, person to person. Yes, it, it depends on the expert. You can do expert. You can use expert knowledge. Maybe sometimes you can do a stakeholder analysis. For example, for some for some uh, waiting, you can also use expert analysis. You can do uh, a stakeholder analysis. Maybe send a questionnaire to to ten experts or 12 experts, so they can express their own op opinion and their own opinion can be in, uh, can be included into the weight selection. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So others, uh, participants? So please uh, unmute yourself and ask a question. So we have still uh, 10 more minutes for the next let's say. Uh, so there's a, another question, Professor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there is, yes. Yes, there is another question. Do we perform reiteration? Of this process, if the final site selection is not is not feasible for landfill, yes, we can do reiteration. Uh, well, actually, this method, uh, the GIS analytical hierarchy process and FASIC, does not result in particular site selection. It defines only areas. If we do want uh, then to do particular site selection, maybe we should also include the criteria about landfill area or landfill capacity because we should also include it as a relevant criteria because we, we want to see if there if these all areas that we have uh, let's say selected they are uh, they are uh, fulfilling the criteria that they have enough area to fulfill the the required landfill capacity so we can do reiteration we can do it is not the final site if it's not let's say suitable for a landfill according or it's not according to some economical criteria it's not physical feasible for example maybe we can find a perfect uh, location that is um, fulfilling all these environmental goals but maybe the cost will be so high that uh, the all the citizens will not be willing to pay so maybe we can uh, we should go to uh, to find some other side that will uh, or some other solution that will lower the costs so the people can be uh, can be all the costs can be let's say um, can be uh, can be adapted by by the users of the waste management uh, system so it, it can be reiterated, all the process can be reiterated. We had some, some similar, some situations like that when we have selected perfect landfill sites, but the costs may be uh, all, the, all the not in back my yard problem uh, is being, it's been activated by the, by the municipalities or or the citizens, and uh, we, we we reiterated the process, finding another landfill potential landfill site. 
Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. So, others, please. Okay. So, if we don't have any questions, then we can go to the next question. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Katharina, for generously accepting our invitation and delivering the expert lecture on site selection for landfill surveys containment facilities. So I, yeah, I understand that it's almost midnight for you, but even then you could able to come for, come forward and deliver the lecture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rao, once again for inviting me. Thank you to all the participants of this course for uh, yeah. listening to the lecture and asking questions. Hope to see you in some uh, on some conference or other lecturing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Professor Catherine. Thank you. Bye -bye. So we, yeah, yeah. We will share your email address uh, of those participants if they want to approach you via email. Okay, it will be okay. So bye bye. You. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. Thank you. Uh, sir, 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 are you available? Hello, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Professor Rao. Yeah, good morning, sir. So, just a minute.